the opening scene features an elderly man named Kazutaka, who is heading a financial advisory firm known as Teai Corporation. In the midst of a stormy night, he gathers all of his staff and asks a question about what gives a person the ultimate power. Each employee takes their turn to respond, presenting varied answers, yet none satisfy Kazutaka. One of the employees, named Rinko Endo, is even scolded when she answers that money makes a person powerful. At that moment, another staff member named Yukio Tonigawa proposes that establishing one's own realm holds the greatest power, and his answer earns him praise from his boss. In the next scene, we are introduced to the protagonist named Kaiji Ito, who is financially broke and has a monotonous lifestyle. He works in a grocery store and is barely able to meet his basic needs and rent. In a hope to change his fate, he time and again invests in scratch-off tickets, but loses all the time. One day, on his way back home, Kaiji shows his frustration by kicking all the expensive cars in the parking lot. When he kicks a Mercedes, a group of security guards pursue and apprehend him for punishment. A short while later, Rinko steps out from the same Mercedes and takes Kaiji to a nearby restaurant for a brief conversation. She shows him a loan agreement he had co-signed as a guarantor for a friend a couple years back. Since his friend is unreachable, Kaiji is now liable to repay the loan. Much to his astonishment, the interest has compounded significantly, resulting in a debt of 2 million yen. Kaiji is clearly unable to pay the debt. Knowing this fact, Rinko offers him a chance to participate in a gambling cruise, saying that if he wins, all of his debt will be wiped clean. Kaiji is reluctant about the whole idea, but since he has no other choice, he agrees. Later that same evening, Kaiji makes his way to the gambling cruise, where he finds numerous fellow participants who are financially broke like him. Shortly after, Yukio addresses the participants and outlines the rules of the game they are about to play. First of all, each player is provided with three stars, each valued at one million. As none of the participants possess sufficient funds, these stars are provided as loans, accruing interest at a rate of 1% per minute. Following this, the players receive 12 rock, paper, scissors cards to use during the game. Victory in each round allows them to claim a star from their opponent. In order to secure victory, one has to retain a minimum of three stars. Provided that, they must use all 12 cards within a 30-minute time frame. With the rules cleared, Yukio initiates the countdown for the game and walks away. Soon after, the situation starts getting intense as people rush here and there to find an opponent and play. Amidst this flurry, one of the participants named Joji Funai approaches Kaiji, who proposes a deal that if they play a draw in every round, they can retain their stars without having to lose the game. Kaiji consents to this plan, and they begin wasting their cards in playing draws. However, at one point, Joji deceives Kaiji and captures two of the stars from him. This enrages Kaiji, resulting in a physical altercation between the two. In the middle of the fight, Joji's blood soils Kaiji's last card. While security intervenes to separate them, Joji discloses that Kaiji's final card is scissors, prompting others to surround him for an easy star. However, Kaiji quickly asserts that Joji's card is rock, diverting the participant's attention towards Joji. In the meantime, the security personnel escort a participant named Koji Ishida back to the central hall, reprimanding him for attempting to dispose of his cards in the toilet. Their toilets are so futuristic that they told on him. As the time is running out, Joji announces that since nobody believes in each other, he has an idea. He proposes to reshuffle the cards to play a fair game, to which everyone agrees. After this, Joji shuffles all the cards and gives them back to the participants. Coincidentally, Kaiji receives the same bloodstained card. He then teams up with Koji and challenges Joji to a one-card match, betting three stars. Joji promptly agrees because he knows Kaiji's last card, but to his surprise, our protagonist defeats him. Here, it's revealed that Kaiji cleverly swapped his card with Koji's, strategically adding blood in order to deceive Joji. With the lost match, Joji is taken away by security, while Kaiji and Koji retain their stars. However, another twist unfolds. When Koji suddenly finds a card in his pocket, upholding his promise to teamwork, Kaiji claims the card as his own, causing both of them to lose. In the aftermath of this event, the defeated participants are transported deep below the Earth's surface and are forced to serve as slaves in the construction of Kazutaka's kingdom. Despite the grueling labor works, they aren't provided with proper meals and are forced to sleep on the bare floor. In addition, <laughs> microchips are fitted in their bodies, preventing them from escaping the place. In remuneration for their work, though, they receive Kazutaka's currency, called perika, which is valued at a mere one-tenth of the Japanese yen. Regardless of the minimal salary, Kaiji 
Luigi remains resolute in amassing enough money to clear his debt. One perica is worth less than one tenth of a penny, and pennies don't even exist anymore. Good luck, Kaiji. However, a day arrives when guards bring in an array of beer and some delicious foods, luring the exhausted workers. Although initially resistant, Kaiji succumbs to temptation, prompting him to spend all of his salary on delicious food and chilled beer. <laughs> Good, good luck, Kaiji. The next day, an earthquake rocks the tunnel, causing injuries among several workers, including Koji. Kaiji rushes him to the infirmary, only to find that treatment requires Perika payment. This disheartening reality shatters hope, until a doctor reveals a last chance for liberation. The Brave Men Road. Emerging victorious in this game promises freedom, while losing it would claim their lives. Later on, names are gathered for the Brave Men Road stage. Driven by his determination to get out of this hell, Kaiji decides to take the risk and volunteers to participate in it. This inspires others, including Koji, so they follow him as well. After this, they are blindfolded and tied before taking them to their destination. Once unblindfolded, they find themselves standing atop the tallest building, where Yukio is also present to host the game of life and death. At first, the participants are handed a cash voucher worth 10 million yen, and in order to redeem it, they must go to another building via two narrow beam paths at immense height. To make the game tougher, they aren't allowed to crawl or else they'll be electrocuted. These rules are formulated to make the game interesting, because a group of wealthy folks are watching this as their entertainment. No doubt, a crew of psychopathic, obese American pervs. Although scared at first, the participants gather their courage and start walking on the beam, trying to maintain their balance. Over time, they manage to cover a distance of approximately five meters, but their progress is interrupted by the sudden onset of lightning, intensifying their fear. One of the group members gets so scared that he starts feeling the wind pushing him, and as a result, he slips his foot, gets electrocuted and falls to his death. The tragic sight makes the other players panic as well, and they start falling over one after another. On the other hand, the wealthy folks enjoy the fall, much to Rinko's disgust. Now, only Kaiji, Koji, and another player named Makoto remain on the beam. To add to their problems, it starts raining, making the beam slippery. Kaiji and Makoto are still determined to complete the task, but in contrast, Koji claims that he is not able to continue. He gives his voucher to Kaiji, asking him to redeem it and hand it over to his debt ridden daughter. After this, Koji commits the unthinkable by falling from there, ending his misery once and for all. Despite the tragedy, both the other participants remain undeterred, and they successfully reach the other side. However, their triumph is short-lived as Kaiji senses something amiss when he observes Kazutaka looking at them from a window. In a sudden gust, the window slams open, throwing Makoto off the building to his death. Kaiji narrowly avoids a similar fate as he somehow manages to hold onto the ledge and climb back. Once he gets inside the building, Kazutaka and his associates applaud Kaiji's victory and extend their congratulations. Kaiji is then presented with 7 million yen, the remainder after his debts are settled. He also seeks to claim Koji's funds, but Yukio says that a deceased person's voucher is of no use. Enraged, Kaiji lunges at Yukio, but the guards swiftly intervene. Impressed by Kaiji's fiery determination, Kazutaka offers him one more chance to engage in another game called E-Card, with Yukio as his opponent. In this game, each player is given five cards featuring four four citizens, and either an emperor or a slave. According to the game rules, the participant choosing the slave card can make the first move. Furthermore, citizen versus citizen is a draw, and a citizen card beats the slave, while the emperor beats the citizen, and the slave beats the emperor. Fat chance. The outcome of three rounds determines the ultimate victor. Following this, Kaiji chooses the card representing the slave side, and initiates the game with it. Yeah, you, you got this, bro! In the first round, the duo plays two citizen cards, resulting in a draw. However, when he proceeds with the slave card a third time, Yukio is able to anticipate it and secures victory. In the subsequent round, Kaiji closely observes Yukio and notices an odd behavior. He keeps on looking at the bottom. Kaiji then decides to forward the slave card, but Yukio once again predicts his move and defeats him. Having lost two out of the three rounds, Kaiji is captured by the guards, who are about to lead him back to the underground tunnel for labor works. During this, he notices a different watch on Yukio's wrist. While he's being taken away, Kaiji tries to figure out how he lost and comes to a realization. The microchip implanted in his body serves as the key to all of this, and Yukio's watch allows him to monitor Kaiji's physiological indicators. After realizing all of the tricks, Kaiji devises a plan to deal with the situation. He requests for a bathroom break. Once inside, he calls Rinko, who is standing at the door. He then unveils his scheme to her, asking her for a loan of 50 million yen, backed by his conviction that he can win in the last round. After a bit of deliberation, Rinko agrees, and the two return 
turned back to the gaming hall. Kazutaka is happy to watch more games, so he permits one more match. Just before the game begins, Kaiji strikes his head against a mirror, shattering it in order to disrupt the functionality of Yukio's watch signal. He then gets on his table, where he grabs three cards, hiding them in his lap. Secretly, he exchanges one of the cards on the table with the one concealed on his lap. As Kaiji shakes his head, the two remaining cards on the table acquire bloodstains. Soon, the game begins, and this time, Yukio appears to be nervous because he can't rely on his watch any longer. They both start with citizen cards, resulting in a draw. In the next round, Kaiji forwards a card with a bloodstain. Seeing this, Yukio's memory triggers, reminding him that the bloodstained cards on the table were a citizen and a slave. As a result, he picks a citizen card for this round. Coincidentally, Kaiji's card turns out to be a citizen once again, leading to another draw. At this point, Yukio grows confident that Kaiji's remaining bloodstained card must be a slave. Following one more draw, Kaiji forwards another bloodstained card. Thinking that it's a slave, Yukio is about to play a citizen, but at the same time, he realizes that he swapped the bloodstained card before starting the game. Remembering a similar trick used by Kaiji earlier in the cruise, Yukio deduces that the card on the table is, in fact, a citizen. With this confidence, Yukio plays the Emperor card, only to be jolted by shock as Kaiji's card is revealed. Yeah! A kunai with chain! Just kidding. To be a slave. In the ultimate turn of events, Kaiji gains a victory over Yukio. Kaiji unveils his trick, admitting that he never actually swapped the card. It was merely a pretense. Following the loss, Kazutaka vents his anger on Yukio and punishes him by sending him underground to work as a slave. In the next scene, we see Kaiji and Rinko at a restaurant where they enjoy their lunch. Shortly after, Kaiji passes out as Rinko seems to have drugged his drink. When he regains his consciousness, he discovers that Rinko is gone with all of the money, leaving behind a letter that states she has taken the money because of the interest per minute on the loan. In the end, Kaiji is left with only 450,000 yen. Regardless, he goes to Koji's daughter's workplace and delivers all of the remaining money, fulfilling his promise. A kunai with chain! A kunai with chain! Yeah! A kunai with chain! Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.